you know, spider practice, we, we you know, kind of took the pads off today. We knew it was a great day to get out in front of the so we had a great turnout, beautiful weather. Um, we reduced some reps of some of the guys that had some high volume, um, you know, over the past 15 practices, so we had a chance to work some other guys. Okay, you know, as you guys know, we had some guys that were out with illness, so we kind of caught up a few of them. Um, solid day. And then uh, they're off tomorrow. And, and then we'll get some life work in on Monday. Guys missing time making up for them. Didn't look like Caleb Sampson participated or Myers in the Yeah, they're they're they've been out now most of the week. You know, we still wait to see, but we expect them back. So where's the running back room, you know, about a week? What how's the running back? Yeah, where's the running back? Well, you know, again, they're just all getting back. I it's probably our deepest position yet. I continue to see uh, great competition there, very pleased with where they're at. And, uh, you know, again, it's highly competitive, so it's been good. Does that depth allow you to work Devin and Kai more on special teams that they've met their yeah. returning? Yeah, they're both going to be involved in the return game. I, I would expect Daniel Highshaw to have some some other roles within special teams. Tori Lachlan was one of our uh, most used and best producing special teams players last year in many different roles. Uh, Savion Morrison, I think, is another guy that's going to have ways to help us in that. So all of them, and uh, I think we continue to address it between that linebacker and defensive back. Those are, I think, we're deeper this year, and it should help us in special teams. Between now and the start of game week, where do you want to see the the team improve overall? Or any, any point of emphasis there? I'll continue. I, I think it's everything. You get a chance to evaluate some tackling when when we do go live here. Um, Again, consistency and, and as we add things and, and making adjustments, you know, on the defense side of the ball and checks and coverages and, and all those type of things that we're doing. Offensively, again, uh, striving for consistency in both way in both run and pass. Continue to work, um, you know, to find. Um, I think we're we're honing in pretty pretty good on top five and six. You know, offensive linemen. You mentioned MRJ being out right now, so it gives other guys opportunities. We continue to to evaluate the depth from you know seven through ten. I don't think we talked about Dominic Pudi much at all, but what have you thought about his adaptation process so far? Outstanding, outstanding. We could not be more pleased. We 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 had good reviews that we were going to get a really good football player. And uh, he's matched all of that and exceeded our expectations and his abilities to adapt. He started off at tackle, he's playing some guard. Um, yeah, he's going to help this football team. There have been a lot of other Big 12 teams that have had some pretty substantial injuries. So you could feel pretty fortunate that you guys were able to get through this entire period. Yeah, right. <laughs> Without having anybody. Yeah. To go down. Well, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately it's part of the game. Uh, you know, we, we still have a ways to go before we kick off. Um, we try to be smart in how we how we're doing it, and you know, part of the reason, um, you know, some of the guys that didn't do as much today, it's based on uh, data and uh, you know, uh, you know, workload and uh, what do they call that in the NBA? Uh, load load management. management. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll use that one. Load management today. That was a load load management day. So I mean, but we do look at that, and 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 there is stuff with that that we want to. Um, you know, try to make sure because, uh, you know, during these times and how we practice and the reps and things, that's where you don't always happen right away in practice that day, but it's it's the volume of work that can cause pulls and strains and things. And, uh, you know, as the closer we get to kickoff, we want to make sure we're in the best shape as possible. And hopefully, uh, you know, we continue to practice such a way that we're, we're as close to full strength as we can be for that opener. So you're tracking... Like volume of work, number of reps, like pretty much mm -hmm. the data that goes into that. That seems kind of interesting. Yeah, we have, uh, in fact, uh, Daniel and the guys can get you, like with Connor McNally, one of our assistant strength coaches, and Matt Gildersleeve can tell you about, you know, yeah, the catapult system that we do that tracks miles per hour, heavy volume. You know, we, we've structured all our practices. Some are like lower volume days, which today was. Uh, we have low medium days, medium, and then, then higher. Is, and, and many people think that it's based on contact. It's based on the volume of running and other things. So there's days that we're just going to do like red zone seven on seven, one-on-ones um, -on in the red zone versus what happens. It's, you know, you go to the 40 or 50, everybody wants to run deep route, run past somebody. Well, that volume 
certain days uh, kickoff or punt coverage, we might just cover for 10 yards versus the whole coverage, or we'll work the final part of the, the closing closing on the ball. So we're not we're not making the guys run as much, but teaching in other ways. There's no ways that we try to reduce the total volume of guys. Those are those vests that they're wearing the trucks on us. Yeah, yeah, and there's the thing in the end, and then if somebody sits in the you know kind of sits at, at the computer and get that. So it's it's really good. We you know we're getting closer to have everybody in them. Um, I, I think. Hopefully by next year we'll have that. And, uh, but we track it. We track it during summer conditioning. We we track it in spring football. All those things. So we can kind of look at it. It might be second nature, but what, what do you tell these guys to get through the next two weeks? Well, now I, I think you know last few days might be a little more of a hump day, you know, or the hump of this. And, and school starts now, so we got another set of you know adjustments of, of schedule. Um, but their day changes. They're not in this building quite as much, obviously. In the afternoons, they're not. And, and uh, but hopefully, when you get under two weeks, you start sniffing kickoff and you start getting excited and. Um, you know, we we'll start turning our attention uh, and focusing on, on installation on some things on Tennessee Tech, and, and uh, I hope that's the part that that uh, you know I said gets them gets them excited. And, you know, the, you put all this work in, especially from January till now, and now you're getting close to what what you're doing it all for. So sometimes I struggle if you're not excited about it. If you put all that, you know, you put eight months of work into something, I I hope you'd be. You know, embracingly excited to, to get there. Um, yeah, I, I would say that. And, and the other part of it is that, again, some of the roles will start being a little more defined as a starting point. And that's an adjustment for guys that have, again, worked hard and competed. And maybe it's not exactly where they're hoping at the moment, but you got to stay with it. And that's part of growing, growing and maturing and working and developing and also being a good teammate. And, and, and that's going to be uh, also important as well, is that, you know, how are you going to be able to help this football team um, get this thing turned around and embracing it for the current situation? Yeah, your fans want to know all the time about a 2 um, Yeah. Have you shown your team one yet, or, or when does that first one show up? The assistant coaches haven't even shown me one because I haven't <laughs> asked. Okay, we talk about groups, and, right. you know, you say that, and you can, you know, you get an idea a little bit where it's at and, and some positions that are a little more defined but again too deep and you know Jim Panagos may may rotate eight defensive tackles yeah. there could be five or six defensive ends there's going to be three or four tight ends we talked about so too deep I don't know unfortunately and no offense it's like you you have only so much room to print a too deep and that's standard so when a guy doesn't see his name you know, he gets, you know, so we'll get there someday when Daniel says we have to release <laughs> one. But, uh, um, you know, it, it's working. And, and we said as we've gone through is how accurate that'll be. Um, and again, I, I want our guys to always be striving to to be in that type of rotation for a roll on game day. You can release it more, David. Okay, well. <laughs>